Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Adam and Orange, and welcome to another 3D Metal model review. This time we're going to talk about this sort of off-brand Star Destroyer we have here. Recently put up the build for video for this. This is the Venator class Star Destroyer. Metal Earth doesn't have, or Peace Cool, doesn't have a copy of this, but a small company I'm told called Datang, D-A-T-A-N-G, makes this model, and you can usually find it somewhere on AliExpress. It can be a little tricky to find sometimes. The store I got it from is no longer, uh, I think they stopped selling it, and then I think the store completely closed? Not sure. If you search for 3D metal puzzle um, Venator class, you use the words Venator, Star Destroyer, and 3D Metal Puzzle, you can usually find it somewhere. Anyway, you notice this isn't 3D uh, Metal Earth model. I usually start off with Metal Earth review, but today it is it is just a 3D Metal model review. I like this model. I was excited to get it because I like Starships. And it's inexpensive. The material is decent. Mm, close to the quality of Metal Earth. I didn't have any issues with... Uh, the metal being soft and difficult to bend cleanly. I didn't have any issues with uh, being thick and difficult to cut. It does have a shine to it. It's not in color, but I like the shine. I've gotten some cheap sort of knockoff models, and they were very dull. And this is not one of them. I've gotten the cheap knockoff models, and uh, the metal was very soft and didn't shape well. This is decent. It is a decent quality at a very inexpensive price. I want to say something like... Uh, four or five dollars to get this model so it didn't cost very much at all and much like the metal earth star destroyer that came out early on it's been out for years now and it's one of the first metal uh star wars metal earth models they put out it's fairly simple to put together the instructions are short and kind of sweet unlike the metal earth ones they are very colorful and i will do some possible close-ups of this as i talk about it the sheet is small. If you take away the color, which makes it stand out and makes it seem really cool, if you take the color out, they're pretty simplistic instructions. They're a bit compact. I mean, building the model for the most part is not complicated, but some of the areas are a little too compact, mainly like this area up here, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Most people do comment about how the instructions are colorful and they like that, and it does make it stand out. I don't really care either way that the instructions with Metal Earth are in color, except for I like that Metal Earth does the color coding on like parts, like, like parts. And I kind of like that they do that with those parts and not with everyone because it makes those similar parts stand out and easier to find. They've just colored everything in here and I think it's fairly accurate, but I want to say there were a couple of colors that were a little off, like the shades were off between the part that was shown on the sheet and the part that was shown or part that was shown on the metal sheets versus the shade of the part that was shown in the assembly instructions. One thing that this does lack, a lot of other brands lack, is whether or not you should twist or fold the tab. You're going to have to decide that for yourself. A little bit of experience will help you here. I typically say that twisted tabs are for inside areas or connections that need to be good and tight and secure, whereas folded tabs are cleaner looking and more for outside areas though sometimes not as secure. The other factor is a lot of times you fold as opposed to twist because the space underneath the part is limited. And you get into that in this area here where thin parts are stacking on top of other thin parts and you've got to have room for them to stack. If you just twist the tabs and leave them sticking down, there's not enough room to stack the parts. Whereas if you fold them over, there it is. So those the experience of building a few of these models will help you decide which way it doesn't tell you. And even with Metal Earth, sometimes they tell you when I feel like they're wrong. Now, I spoke about the metal being of good quality, close to the level of Metal Earth. One issue I did have several times could be me, but I feel like it's something about the way the metal of the sheets are constructed. But there were several times I had to do a little extra work to clean up the tabs because they didn't cut cleanly. And I'm just normal, I'm accustomed to them cutting cleanly. And for this model, several pieces didn't. So like early on, as I'm putting like these side pieces on the top, I had to go back and trim the edges because they wouldn't sit flat because 
where I had clipped the part had a little nub left and you know making sure you're cutting flush and against the part that you're cutting out it's going to help avoid that and you know going back I probably could have been a little more careful initially cutting it out but I'm usually able to get by without having to be quite that aware of what I'm doing whereas this model I had several issues not a big deal but something that kind of set it apart from the metal earth to me was that the tab didn't seem to want to clean, clip as cleanly as a metal earth usually does. I mean, even with metal earth, I sometimes have to clean it up. But with this one, it was several times when I didn't expect it to be. Parts one through seven, very simple and straightforward. And there are, there are a lot of the detail parts on the top. And a couple of these towers here, I think the, the inner ones that are shorter. But once you get past, I believe it's past eight, or once you get to part eight and own, you're building these taller two towers and it gets a little fuzzy in there and this is where I started to run into issues you basically got parts 8, 9, 10 you got parts 8 to 13 that come together into one of the two towers taller towers and then you got step A which is the very top section this little kind of longer part that sticks out here that one of them is part A, and then you build the other tower, which is 8, 9, 14, 15, and 17, and then you build section B, which is that top section of the other tower. And one of the issues, and I'm not the only one that had this issues with A and B, um, the instructions are kind of tiny and fuzzy, and it's a little difficult to tell exactly what they're wanting you to do there and how you want to shape things. It's not terribly hard to figure out, but possibly just a little fuzzy and confusing because the instructions are a little blurry and saturated with color. Some of the tinier parts, I know I had to kind of go and look um, at other people's builds and, and try to find online pictures of the model, the completed model, or pictures of the you know actual ship to figure out what was going on, and that led to more confusion. And again, I'm not the only one that had this issue. Basically, if you go looking up models of the Venator class online, you'll find there's variations in them. There's not, it doesn't seem to be a consistency to how things are made. There seems to be some variations in different designs and models. I don't know if that's intentional artist interpretation or what's going on there. But it makes figuring out how to build this a little bit more confusing because they're in the, the top corner of the front page is a little fuzzy and there's no reference photos to go by like Metal Earth has. One of the things that I ran into, which may have just been me, I felt like when I went to put part 13 on, which is kind of a flat triangular side of one of the towers, it didn't want to sit right. And I ended up going and clipping out part 17 and got that piece to sit just right. And 17 is basically the side, part on the other side. And I got it to fit and later on when I got between the section A and B, um, I put 13 where 17 was supposed to go and it worked out. What possibly could have happened is the thin side pieces, eight and nine, on both of those tower assemblies, they are supposed to have a little bit of an inner fold to them and I may not have gotten one of those inner folds correct possibly and it threw it off because I really don't see why there would have been much of a difference between 13 and 17, but I don't know. I, it, Part of, I want to say that if there's no difference, why they name them two different numbers or categorize them as two different numbers. But that doesn't discount the idea that they could be the same because the two different sides look the same. They're just kind of mirrored each other. And that's where another bit of confusion comes in. It seems that partway through the instructions, the parts are flipped as you continue the assembly, but there's nothing indicating if and when it should be flipped and it kind of looks like the two assemblies one both of them have 8 9 and 10 one of them has 11 12 and 13 the other one has 15 16 and 17 kind of looks like they're assembled the same but then maybe one's flipped it's easy to get confused if you look at it closely you see where they're going but it's easy to get ahead of yourself and confused because it's not clearly shown that one is flipped over and the other is not and then you go to adding the top section on which consists of 20 21 and 22 
for both sides, even though, you know, there's a section A and B, they're including the same parts. Again, it gets confusing here, and it's even confusing to try and explain how it goes, because it looks like you're, the way the instructions are, you're building the bottom part of the tower, and then you've got assembly A, which includes the bottom part of the tower, plus the top part you added to it. And then you build the bottom part of the other tower, and assembly B, you're building the top part and adding it to the bottom assembly that you built previously. But in B, it looks like they may have flipped the bottom assembly back around in the instructions and having you put that top part on the same way that you put the top part on in A. Except there's a couple of parts flipped up above. So it's, you really have to pay attention here because they're flip-flopping things a little bit unpredictably in ways that I didn't anticipate and it made me stop and go, all right, so here's the thing. I'm going to show you here. These top two towers, if you look, this triangular piece, there's a smaller, let's see if I can't find a better pointer. I don't really have a pointer. But you can see on this triangular piece, there's a tiny little triangular piece on the side of it. There's nothing on the inside. If you flip it over, there's the other side. It's like a mirror image. There's a tinier triangular piece inside the larger one. Both of those triangular pieces are facing out. There's nothing on the inside. In between there's no triangular piece inside so if you build both sides the exact same way and put the top on the exact same way one of those little triangular pieces is going to be hidden on the inside it's not going to look right and you have to be sure that when you're adding that top part on you're holding the bottom part correctly and the way the instructions kind of flip back and forth and rotate the way assemblies come together, it's easy for you to get lost and end up putting these together incorrectly so it doesn't line up properly. And me trying to explain it is potentially making it even more confusing than it already is, but in a nutshell, make sure when you're assembling this side, you're putting that smaller triangle piece outside and this top part on so that, you know, I guess the longer part is sticking up above. And when you're assembling the other side, make sure that triangular piece is on the other side. And that top piece is going on so that when you put these together on the assembly, the top parts are the same way. So at least it matches and it looks right. All of that being said, I also wanted to make sure that I was facing things the right way. And that I was putting this little box kind of curved long piece on the back and this box shaped piece with the tilt on the front and these curved bits on the bottom were supposed to be on the front and not hanging off the back. I wanted to make sure I was assembling all that at least close to what the model is supposed to look like. And again, I go look online and I try to find examples of how this model is supposed to look in the show, in the movies, because it was in the movies. It was in uh, one or two of the movies. It was in um, the Clone Wars animated series and possibly other places and comic books and there's models that exist out there and people have made their own models but I couldn't find a definite consistency about how things were supposed to look. There was enough inconsistency that I basically just decided you know what I'm gonna put it together this way and that's how mine's gonna look because reasons between the instructions being potentially confusing and potentially mixing you up and people building models different way and it looked different ways in different photos you just kind of got to pick one direction and go with it so pick the direction you want and make sure that you assemble the bottom and top pieces enough so they align so when you put it on the model everything's going to look all right once you get past that part and you assemble all the pieces on the top you're pretty well good to go i don't like that they end up fanning out like they do when i think they should be standing straighter and that is just simply because of the way this, this is designed. The bottom of these two tall towers is flat. And the top of this ends up tilting when you add the back piece in. Which essentially fans those top pieces out. I feel like those top pieces should have a slight angle to them. So that they tilt inward. So that when you, fan, when you stretch the bottom or the top piece out to fit they fan back straight if that makes any sense that's one of my complaints now again after you've put these towers on the top 
you add these long fin pieces on the side and they're pretty straightforward possibly even simpler than say the Millennium Falcon was with its it has a similar like trim pieces around the top and bottom halves to separate them it takes a little time to make sure you've got all the angles right especially this angle in here but not not too difficult you get those on and then you build the bottom section which is pretty simple even simpler really because you only have a few pieces to add on the bottom the stand and there's all these like little I guess turrets that you kind of tilt out to give them more of a 3d look and also a few on the back of the top that you you turn as well and then it's time to build this back section which is a very different assembly than the regular Star Destroyer and I kind of enjoyed there are pieces ringed inside of other pieces and you kind of have to tilt the flaps a little bit to give it that thruster look it's kind of hard to see I'll try to get a close-up of that one thing that I definitely made a note of we run into another issue where alignment is not really explained in the instructions part 29 which is I believe the outer ring of the three let's see there's there's two inner smaller two inner larger engine sections and two smaller outer engine sections and the inner engine sections are made in two pieces there's like an inner ring and then an outer ring the outer ring part 29 has two little notches kind of in one area so it seems apparent that those notches are supposed to face a certain way now the instructions indicate to kind of point them down what it doesn't really indicate is how to tell if that back piece is up which side is up and which side is down and i don't know that there's any clear difference i mean there the pattern isn't in such a way that it's if you run the line down the middle of the back piece the pattern isn't the same on both sides it's a word for that um is obviously slightly different on one or the other but there's nothing that i remember that indicates with the larger back piece part 27 what's up and what's down so again you just kind of have to decide which side of that's going to be down and with parts 29 and 31 which have the little not two notches on one area make sure they're all facing the same way and uh put it together so that that you've now basically made the side that those notches are on down and the other side up or top and that's how you're going to want to put it in the back of the whole assembly because after you've done that you're going to add the back engine assembly into the bigger model and then add the bottom part with a couple more pieces and finish off the model it's a little it's a little fuzzy so again the some of the instructions are tiny and you can't see the detail of how things are shaped and fold there's no indication about whether or not to fold or twist tabs which with experience you don't really need that and there's a lack of clarity about how things are supposed to align in some areas so the instructions while colorful and nice looking are lacking some of the detail I would expect to make sure I'm getting this model put together with some consistency you have to look out for yourself and figure out how you want to do it and how what direction you want to go if there's a particular design that uh, makes more sense to you i'm sure there are people out there that are much more knowledgeable on what is movie correct or what is animation correct and how to orient the parts not one of those people i just i'm just not i'm honestly not typically that attuned to detail so yeah there's probably people out there that can go hey you know this is when it comes to that top section of those engines or which side is up I know which side is up or which, which side should be and I know what they've done wrong with the design because reasons but I'm, I'm not the one that can tell you uh, what's screen accurate and what's not so I just kind of picked the direction that made sense to me and put it together and I'm positive somebody out there is going to eventually tell me that I've done it wrong and that's okay if I did everything perfect then I wouldn't have nothing to learn I guess I don't know and then you get near the end you've got all the model assembled actually almost all the model assembled you've got the top part together the back section on you're built 
what needs to be built on the bottom piece and you're adding the stand and the stand part 38 the tabs that hold it on i wish they would have moved the slots over a little bit because those tabs line up with tabs of another part i believe it is part 34. so part 34 is held in by four tabs and part 38 also has four tabs while the length between them is different I want to say there's at least two of those tabs that line up with the other and so they're you know right side by side so it's difficult to get tool in there to twist them and they could have easily remedied that situation and made it easier on people assembling the model by moving a couple of those tabs in either direction just a little bit so they're not coming out right beside each other and making life difficult when it didn't need to be so another small complaint about this particular build now while i have complaints about the build overall for the money i paid it's actually really good it's a really nice model small issues i'd like to change but it's the only venator class model that i know of as of now and possibly will remain the only one for some time if any other pop up there'll probably be copies of this one maybe but yeah it's not terrible there's things that can be improved i can say that about any model there's things that frustrated me, and I wish the instructions were a little better detailed, gave a little more information about how parts align, and I wish they would do something to fix how these kind of fan outwards. The other thing with mine, I don't know if you can see it, but the nose from here forward with this little square piece is, the bottom just ended up flattening out, and it, it almost looks like the front is drooping because of the way that that occurred and it came together and i could try to fix it i don't know how successful i'd be without scratching and bending things up and i'm just going to kind of leave it like it is i'd love to see metal earth or peace cool come together and put together a better colored version and fix some of these errors and just add more detail to it i mean they, they're certainly adding a lot of detail to the latest models but for now this is what we have if you're a big star wars fan like me this is what we can get um, i'd put a link in the description where you can find this model but it seems to change somewhat regularly because i've seen it in several different places aliexpress and other places and they don't stay for very long they don't stay forever so and the usual question i like to ask myself at the end of a build when i'm doing the review if i had this model to do over again what would i do differently the one thing is possibly spending a little more time beforehand researching the different variations and trying to find some consistency with this model to have more of a guide to go by since the instructions are a little bit lacking. Um, you know, I ended up researching it middle of the build and the research only went so deep and I got kind of frustrated and said, you know what, we're just going to do it this way. And I get that impatient when I'm building. Maybe if I did some research ahead of time, I could come, um, I could have maybe done a more accurate job of putting this together and maybe had a more accurate uh, review of the finished model. And at the same time, I may have just added to my frustrated frustration, made the build more difficult, and possibly even delayed me building it because I didn't want to after being frustrated with the research. So that could go either way. I wish I would have seen and prevented this little flattening bit right here. Don't know if I would have succeeded. I feel like this front piece right here is keeping it straight on line and making it difficult for that to fold down. But other than that, it was a fairly simple and fairly simple build outside of a few confusing bits that I just had to kind of decide which direction I'm going to go. It's a nice model. It's a cheap model. It's Venator class, so if you like the ships like I do, this is one of those ships that you don't see out there very much, and you certainly don't see it in Metal Earth or Peace Cools lineup or Tenyo. So it's nice to be able to add this to the collection, and it's a shiny and similar design to the older Metal Earth models, so it fits in nicely on the shelf. It doesn't really stand out as something that doesn't belong. It, it more of a, hey, I didn't know Metal Earth made that. Well, it's not really a Metal Earth, let me tell you about it kind of thing. So it works. I'm glad to have it. I didn't pay much for it, and it wasn't a pain in the butt to put together. I've certainly built 
far more difficult, far less quality, and far more confusing builds. Overall, decent. Solid, decent model. I'm going to leave it at that. It's pretty short. I really not a whole lot to talk about other than some complaints. So, rather than continue to gripe, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to move on. And I'm going to say if you want to check this out, look for it on AliExpress, search for Venator Class 3D Metal Puzzle. It's only a few dollars if you've got some experience building models. You can certainly uh, put this thing together and, you know, make a few decisions of your own with the knowledge in this video of how you want these top pieces to work and, and how you want the engines, which way you want things facing and how you want that to look. Not big decisions and be happy with your model and yeah, add it to your collection. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for continuing to support this channel and making builds like this possible. And as always, keep on keeping on.